Okay, this is the this is the oral history with uh, my sister Cheryl Beal. We will be talking today uh, about our paternal great great grandfather. No, great grandfather. Okay. All right. Today is um, the interview with Cheryl Beal, and it will be about our great grandfather Charles Gilson Beal. Today is November 30th. It is 2.26. I am in Largo, Florida, and my sister is in St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay, so who is Charles Gilson Beal? Okay, um, Charles Gilson Beal is our great-grandfather, uh, son of uh, Charles Estimer Gilson and Delia Hartwell Beal. He was... Um, he was born in on January 24th in 1863. I, I went back through the censuses last night and because um, it does tell a tale. Uh, in 1880, the 1880 census, which is the, the first one I really catch him at, mm -hmm. um, at age 17, uh, he was, he was not, known as a grandson. However, in the 18... 70 census um he's listed with the other children um so in that census he was sort of uh not the grandson but the son okay and at now, that point his name was that that point his name was beale charles gilson beale okay now hang on a minute the 18 what census was his name charles gilson beale uh 1870 Okay, and you said in a census he was listed as a, as a grandson? The next one, in the 1880. Okay, uh, okay, great. Also, in the 1870 census, uh, Susan Minnie was mm -hmm. living with the grandparents. Um, okay. And, and uh, in the 1880, she was not living there. And in the 1880... Uh, Charlie, as he was known, was age 17, um, and he was a shoemaker. Okay. Okay, so in 1870, he's listed as the son, but then in 1880, he's listed as the grandson. Yeah. Um, okay, so who are these people that at first he's listed as the son, and then later... The same people are listing him as the grandson? Yeah. Um, Charlie's mother, Delia Hartwell Beale, um, mm -hmm. was married to Ch Charlie's father, Charles Estima. Um, however, Delia has a history, and we'll, we'll get to that in the next video mm -hmm. regarding those two. Um, but she left to be with her lover. And uh, uh, took and um, she left the kids behind with her parents, um, okay. who were, you know, um, Kelvin and Sally. I think Melinda, maybe. No, Melinda was a sister. Okay. Yeah, Calvin and Sally. Yes, that's right. I remember looking at that. Okay, so. He's originally listed, he and his sister. I'm sorry, it was wrong. It was, it was Cyrus and Melinda. Calvin and Cyrus. Cyrus, the next generation up. <laughs> okay, Cyrus and Melinda Beale. Right. Listed as the grandparents for Charlie Gilson Beale. Correct. In 1870. Yeah. But then in 1880, he is listed as their grandson on the census. Yeah. Now, there yeah. you said... There was a sister, Minnie. The sister was known as Minnie. Uh, yeah. Her given name was Susan Minnie. Yeah. Um, and she, uh, in later years, uh, was uh, claiming to be a descendant of uh, Charlie. <clears throat> and there were um, 
there was an affidavit and in the affidavit many things were exposed many things we didn't know about that have yeah. since come to light so um that's a fascinating story and again we'll get into that at another time <laughs> yeah because there's way too much to be going through on that one all right so, um, well, anyways let's just um, keep this relatively simple charlie and minnie were brother and yes well, brother and half sister correct Okay, good. All right, so right now we're just working on Charlie uh, Gilson. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So he is listed in 1870 again as the grandchild. No, child. In 1870 is the child. I'm sorry. Yes. So that must be the time where um, his mother took off to be with another man. And it would have been before that because he was, I think, seven in the okay. 1870 census let me look okay. and see how old is it yeah seven and okay. uh, so somewhere between his birth um and uh, in 1863 mm -hmm. and 1870 mm -hmm. um she took off and mm -hmm. it, i mean it would appear that um you know he was probably just a baby yeah probably just a baby and since he was um charles estimer gilson's son yeah. And, and not Elijah Godfrey's son, who mm -hmm. that's Delia's love of her life. Yeah. Um, she left him behind. So yeah. Yeah. I do. I do remember because in that deposition, he said there was a question of whether or not Delia and his father got divorced before she married the love of her life, Godfrey. Right. And they asked him, did you attend a wedding? And he said, I was a little young, but yes, I attended a wedding. And then they said, well, who, you know, was she your mother or your sister? And at that time, so at that time, we thought, meaning his sister, Minnie, uh, we thought she was our older sister. So that's the story right there. Right. That they didn't want to tell the kids. Right. And then down the road, it comes out. So. Right. Anyways, yeah. okay, so now that we've got that bowl of spaghetti kind of straightened out. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's I, a huge mess. I'm going to have to put a chart on this video. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a huge mess because when Delia, um, well, first of all, there was no divorce for for Charles Estimer Gilson and Delia Hartwell Beale. Okay, you're spoiling the story in the next video. That's going to be a good one. Well, so I'm down just, that road. <laughs> it is, it is, it took me months to untangle yeah. that and several communications <laughs> with, with another cousin who has since yeah. disappeared off the face of the earth. So um, I'm glad I got him before he decided that he was just going to yeah. run away from his wife. So <laughs> it's just what oh, a mess. Geez. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyways, let's get back on Charlie. Okay. So back to Charlie. So in 1880, um, yeah. again, he's 17, he's yeah. working as a shoemaker, and Susan, who was 19, is not living there anymore. Yeah. So she's gone elsewhere, whether she's living with her mother or she's off on her own or doing her own thing. I don't know. I can look that up and we'll, I'll figure that out. I'm yeah. sure I have the information someplace. Um, in 1883, he yeah. married Fanny Graham. Yeah. Um That's kind of interesting because um, I don't ever recall hearing about those grandparents ever. So, um, and it's not like they weren't alive. Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, I'm trying to remember was Fanny. Well, I know Charlie died like 1934. Yeah. And dad, Fanny. dad yeah. never said anything about that. And mama never said anything about those sets of grandparents only the greens which the video is up right um yeah fanny died in 1946 yeah so so let's see may of 1940 so that was mama and daddy had been married for a year almost yeah. 
Um, so, mom, and again, you know, the Grahams and yeah. I mean, everybody knew everybody because yeah. this was an Adic and, you know, but Fanny was born in South Boston. Ah. Um, and they lived in the area on P Street, which was like, uh, it was known for the tenements uh, of, of the Irish and the Scots okay. in Boston. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I do remember, uh, I was remember dad was downstairs working in the shop you know woodworking and stuff or yeah. maybe maybe i was out helping him with the car and i asked him where he learned this stuff and he said his father and his grandfather right and he never mentioned which set and if you think about it you know the green william or willie green lost a leg i don't think he was going to be out there doing a lot of manual labor like woodworking or auto mechanics well, you know, you never know. There's a that's a I, tough, tough generation. They did what they had to do. I know, I know. So and, this, and, and, and these Beale boys, I'm yeah. telling you, I mean, they were forever hacking something off. I mean, well, every time I see it, it, it for the uh, the draft, yeah, or, or the military, whatever it is, yeah. um, you know, distinguishing characteristics. You know, they're missing a thick finger or a yeah. thumb. Or um, a leg. So yeah. What were they doing? They were either extremely careless or in a rush. I'm not quite sure, but they were just not. Fit. They were all 4F. You know, they just <laughs> were not military material. But they were well, workers. They well, worked their asses off. So, no. anyways, it's just speculation. You know, maybe Dad did meet his grandfather. Um, I'm sure Beasy told him. About, well, they were just down the street. Yeah, so I'm sure he did. Just never heard of. Um, he never, never talked about. They the never talked about him. Yeah, yeah, no idea. No, and he idea. never talked to mom about it, and mom never told us. So, anyways, no, I'll have to ask the Texas cousins and see if they'll get yeah. give me an answer of some sort. That would be lovely, but yeah, yeah who knows? Um, oh. Yeah. So, anyways, um, okay. That, so that sets up, our, you know, what we know about him. We really don't have any personal. Um, no recollections so go ahead okay so in 1910 yeah um they're married uh charlie and franny are, are married and uh fanny rather are married um and they're living on pond street um and mm -hmm. they, at that point they have three children yeah. now it's very interesting because the pond street address carries on for several decades yeah. Um, of of the family living in that house, and the other thing is, um, it's very close to where St. Patrick's Cemetery and Dell Park Cemetery are. So mm -hmm. it's like a, a, you know a short wander down the street, <laughs> um, and, and you know they were buried on both sides yeah. of, of of the street. So um, I think that was Central. No, was it? Maybe. Yeah, I think it was off of Central. Um, so it's just fascinating. I mean, I, I do have a, a, a historical map of yeah. Natick, and it's fascinating because it does have the names of the families on it, mm -hmm. um, which I hope isn't in that box that I gave to Kristen. <laughs> so, anyway, okay. I was being so efficient that day. Yeah. Anyway, uh, in 1920, mm -hmm. um, and this, this I thought was really interesting. Um, he's living in Whitman, Mass. Yeah. He's in a rented room and he is single. And I thought, huh, interesting. Uh, in, in 1930, yeah. he is, he's listed as divorced yeah. and he's back in Natick as a lodger at some place. And then of course, 1932, um, he died January 5th. Um, now, I'm flipping the sheet over because that's Fanny's information. Yeah. And that's kind of interesting too, in, insofar as the two of them are concerned. Um, she was, uh, she, she lists herself as Scots Irish. Mm -hmm. um, she was born in South Boston, 1865, 1870. She's living in Sherburne with her family. And interestingly enough, mm -hmm. she had a brother by the name of Robert. Hmm. I know, huh? Because I wondered what, you know, it was probably, it was, first of all, it was a popular name at the time. Yeah. But Robert is a Scots name. Yeah. Um, 
like Robbie Burns. Uh, it's uh, mm. it typically typically Scots, and her being a Graham, which is Scots. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. If you ever wonder, you can walk around all you want saying that you're Irish, but I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of Scots <laughs> going on between you know the Morrisons and the Grahams. Anyway, well, anyway, uh, Fanny has a brother called Robert. Because she has a few brothers, but yeah, she did. I thought Robert was interesting because Daddy's name was Robert. Yeah. Um, she also had a brother, William. So uh, he was named Robert. Daddy's name was Robert William. Yeah. Now the fact that there were also Williams on the Green side, the Irish side of the yeah. family, is interesting, and we there's no information regarding namesakes. So you know, well, unlike our. Unlike our, unlike our nephew, Robbie. Yeah. So. Interestingly enough, though, since there was Willie Green and Willies. Yeah, yeah. And Fanny's brother, Robert, and other brother, William. Speculation. Charlie said to Fanny, I want to name my son. Yeah. No, because no, he named his son George and um, Alfred. Uh, now Fanny probably said yeah. I want to name him after my brother because I mm -hmm. think and, and I've run across a couple of things regarding Fanny and her brother he uh, said to Robert. George she said to George name him after because George was daddy's father he was the, he, <laughs> George and Helen would be the ones that would have named daddy Robert William follow me yeah yeah so yeah, maybe and, she and, did and yeah. and, and, and George probably just said, I'm naming him Robert. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had a right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So in 1880, uh, Fanny's 15 years old and she's yeah. a servant. So yeah. she's like, uh, she may have still been living in her family's house because she was only 15, or she yeah. could have been living in the home of the people that she was a servant for. Yeah. Um, like I said, she's uh, says 1880, and uh, she's a servant. And I think you know, it all depends on where the census taker was. So if Fanny was in the house the day of the census, yeah. and she was acting as a servant in that home, then you know that she was on that census with that family. I'm surprised she didn't list it as a domestic, because that's what they were called. No, 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 no. Nope. Nope, nope. You have to go by what the census says. Yes, no, I know. And the census only has certain um, categories. Okay. Yeah, um, which you can look up because uh, yeah. every census was different. Uh, that book that I showed you the other day, the uh, yeah. family tree thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's got all the questions and everything else on it. It's a fascinating book. Anyway, nineteen ten, she's married. I'm sorry, nineteen hundred. She's married to okay. um, to, to to Charlie, and um, um. How old was she then? And how old was he? How old was she? Seventeen. Okay. And Charlie, I don't know. I think I think they were the same age. Yeah, he was close because if if um, she was yeah. born in eighteen eighty three. Oh no! No, he was born in eighteen sixty two. I'm sorry. Yeah, sixty three. 1863 and yeah. um she was born 1865 so yeah yeah they were close. If she was 17 he was 19 yeah that's fine okay now he's still a shoemaker yeah when they get married does she stop working as a servant or is she well she stopped working as a servant um i don't i, I think that once you became a married woman yeah. You became a homemaker. Yeah. You know, you were expected as a couple to go out on your own and, and be, you know, the, the women were just automatically homemakers. And that's how yeah. it came across. She was okay. a homemaker. Um, so uh, 1900, they're married. They're living in Pond Street. 1910, still married. She's a homemaker. Yeah. They're living at 75 Pond Street. Mm -hmm. And at that point, whereas they had rented before, they now owned the house which is huge. That was huge to own a home. Um, I, I have a feeling that uh, Fanny was probably a go-getter. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I think she managed the house. Well, what and did on that on that census? What was Charlie's job listed as? It, it was shoemaker. Oh, okay. Um. So there we are, 1910, married. She's a homemaker. They're at 75 Pond Street. The house is owned. Yeah. In 1920, uh, she's divorced. Mm -hmm. And she, on the census, it's just she and um, Beezy, Grandpa. Yeah. They're, they're the only ones in the house on Pond Street. Um, and then 10 years later, 1930, She's at Pond Street alone and divorced, which is kind of unusual because back then, uh, women didn't really want to put down that they were divorced. There was such a social stigma attached to all of that. So normally they would put down widow, um, which the first time I ran across that and then found out that the guy was alive 10 years later, it's like, what the hell just happened? Um, but I found out that that was sort of a, a social convention. Women did not want to be known as divorced because they immediately had a reputation as being a loose woman. Why? Yeah. I don't know. But, um, um, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a male thing because even I remembered when, when uh, friends of mine's parents got divorced and they were the loveliest couple. <laughs> and, um, you know, suddenly daddy was like, I don't want you going over there. Um, it was all kinds of crazy stuff, and I couldn't understand it because she was the nicest woman, so much fun. And, um, you know, it was suddenly like, you know, the family was off limits because there was a divorce yeah. in the family. It's just crazy crap. Well, but interesting thing, though. So on the federal census, she puts yeah. down a divorce. Yeah. She's living in a small town at that time, Natick. Everybody yeah. knows yeah. everybody. So I'm, oh, sure yeah. they, I'm sure they knew. You know, they're getting a divorce, so why? She probably said, what's the reason to hide it on a federal right. census? Right. Yeah, like I said, I think Fanny had to. I think I wished I really had known Fanny. I think I would have <laughs> liked her very much. I yeah. think we'd have sat down and had a cup of coffee and maybe a glass of wine or two. But um, I, I think that she was probably quite well, a woman. Interesting. Quite a woman. Knowing uh, Daddy's moral compass. Oh, boy. Yeah. Maybe that's why we didn't hear a lot about her. <laughs> well, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Or his, grand or his grandfather, yeah. It would not surprise me. I mean, divorce for Daddy, divorce was like, you know, such an anathema. Um, and when um, his sister, Evelyn, got yeah. divorced, not once but twice, I mean, Daddy was like beside himself, and he wanted nothing to do with her. It was like, it was yeah, just, they, well, he, uh, I remember him saying, was, "That's the first divorce." Uh, well, I'm sure it is, but yeah. um, you know, I remember distinctly him yeah. saying, "You know, that's the first divorce in our family." Well, he must have been spinning once I discovered that no, it was not the first; it was like the tenth. Um, divorce maybe, is common in our family. Maybe he meant. The immediate family. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, Probably. as far so as far as divorce is concerned, I was just practicing until I found the right one. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess we well, actually, all were. I guess actually, we all were. Actually, my former spouses were the ones. Yeah, done that. Tried that. Moving on. Anyways, I'm not going down that road. So no, listen. Let's yeah. just say <laughs> divorce was not a new thing when uh you know fanny and and, and yeah. charlie got divorced it it uh, it had been happening okay so we, we they're an interesting them. couple though oh <laughs> uh, yeah i know we've tracked them through the um their the ages up until they get divorced and they're middle aged by that time so how yeah. many kids did they have three three okay they had three one of which was uh grandpa Oh, yeah, grandpa. grandpa. Okay, and that um, was George. George. Beal. Yes. Let what, me was his, what was his middle name? Albert. Albert. Okay, and he had a brother. Yeah. Hold on. Let me scroll it up here. Um, he had uh, two bro two brothers and a sister. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, oh, Florence was. Yeah. No. Nope. See, I told you. If you bring up the ancestry tree, you would see all of this. Uh. His sister was the eldest, uh, Florence Hartwell Bale, 
tragic, tragic life. Um, then a brother, El Elf Alfred Hamilton Beale, um, and he was a he 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 did all right for himself. Um, he went out to California, which really threw me off because um, I, I was missing him for a while. And then digging through the censuses, I found mm -hmm. him out in California, and then he ended up coming back uh, to to Natick uh, to okay. be with his mother Fanny. Uh, 1940, the census shows him there as head of house, um, and it's just he and Fanny. Fanny, I think, was 74 at the time, mm -hmm. and then um, Fanny did died it, in 1946. Did it list uh, Alfred's occupation? Uh, it may have. I didn't write that down. Okay. Okay, I mean, so, yeah. and the other brother was? We have, we have Florence. Mm -hmm. No, it, it was just Florence and Alfred and George. Those yeah. are the three kids. Okay. So, so, yeah. You had mentioned... Um, so that's a brother and a sister. Yeah. So it you had, been high. It's okay. You mentioned Florence, and yeah. it's tragic. Yeah. Okay, now, based upon their birth dates, George and Alfred and Florence <coughs> were all in their 20s when World War I, when the United States went to, um, declared war and went on Germany and went to war. Um, yeah, wait a minute. You understand something. And again, if, if you brought this up, you'd see that there is such an age difference of almost... Uh, 10 years yeah. between Florence and the two boys. Yeah, but still, anyone in their 30s um, would was in the Army in World War One because they were drafting at 21. So they were taking guys up to 30 years old or even 35. But what I'm getting at is, so the tragedy with Florence, what happened? Um, apparently, she was engaged mm -hmm. and her bow went off to war. World War and, One. Uh huh. And her bow did not return, uh -huh. and it shattered her. And she spent the rest of her life in an institution. Um, she apparently went into a horrific depression, and yeah. just that was it. She just she never came out of it. Um, you know, she would come for visits. I I remember Florence, and really? she was a lovely lady. Yeah, she was a lovely lady. She just um apparently just did uh she just couldn't cope so she would come out on those you know the holidays or whatever yeah. um she may have come out more often than that i don't know because we only saw her on the holidays yeah. um but i remember she wasn't like there, there was a like a bedroom off the living room at graham's house and um i remember that's where florence would sit she wouldn't come out into the, the chaos. She would just <laughs> sit in the other room and, yeah. and she would smile or she'd clap her hands when the music was going. But, uh, yeah. you know, it, um, it was, it was all, it was very sad when I found out why I knew she was in an institution. I just did not know why. Huh. And then, you know, digging and digging, you know, I come up with this and that she was, uh, it was one of the censuses for her. Um, it gave the street address. And then I looked that up. And then uh, it turns out that it was an institution. Hmm. Um, you know, it wasn't like um, one of those horrible places. It was more like a, a sanitarium. Yeah. You know, uh, where she, it was just a quiet place for her. And, you know, she was probably medicated yeah. um, and kept there so that she didn't do harm to herself or others. So um, you did, but you did see her, right? You did meet her. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, that was it. It was like, just like, oh, that lady over there, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's yeah. Aunt Florence. So, you know, mm -hmm. hey, how you doing? But again, you know, this was me under the age of eight. Or okay, so you actually met Florence at a young age? Uh, yeah, again, you know, uh, it would have been on one of the holidays that we went out to see, you know, the family out in Natick. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you know, she'd be sitting... Um, in this bedroom just off the living room. Yes. Yeah. 
and you know she didn't come out and join in the chaos she just um i just she was nice she was a nice old lady and uh and she was old yeah so um, did mom or dad have any interaction with her don't know i couldn't tell you no. i mean it's probably you know. just probably just busy and helen um okay so now we're going to do another video later on um george our grandfather yeah grandpa and helen yeah what yeah. about alfred uh you know all mm -hmm. i have is like you know it would be the censuses or whatever which i do not have in front of me because we weren't going to talk about him today That's um, okay you know I, I can do some more research or go back and see what i have on him but uh but we're trying to keep this on a linear track yeah, so that we don't yeah. get lost in the weeds as we normally do. Yeah. Um, but trying to get, you know, the grandparents, it's kind of an essential thing. In yeah. any event, uh, we're, um, I think Alfred had children. Let me see. You know, I've done so many different family yeah. trees and they're all geographically in the same area i get a little yeah if, if i don't have paperwork in front of me i have a hard time uh remembering and of course my memories yeah left on the express train that's okay god almighty let's anyways see what I have for let me okay. see well let me see what i have for alfred so he he lived um in natick mm -hmm. It says there's a possible marriage record. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to look that up. Um, he also lived in Connecticut. I have a World War dra One draft registration card. Yeah. You know, it shows where he lived on Pond Street. It shows his uh, World War Two old man draft registration. <laughs> um, and a notation made yeah. November uh, 5, November 1943. And he was living in Phoenix, Arizona at the time, uh, from 1943 to 1950. Yeah. And then he moved back to live with his mom. Yeah. Um, who passed in 1946. On um, his um, on his World War II old man draft registration card, it lists yeah. his occupation. Do you have it in front of you? Well, it just says that um, his employer's name and address was the Public Works Department in Natick. He died in 1950, but I think he <laughs> died. I think he died before the census, yeah. which is usually like in April. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. All right, I'll, so I'll look it up. Well, he still has to be listed because he was alive in 1950. So yeah. that's listed on another schedule, I think. Mm. Okay, well, so what we have now is three children, one of which is our grandfather, and then he had a sister and a brother. Yeah. Um, tragically for his sister. Yeah. Um, which he went through. She um, broke heart. Yeah. So Charlie seems to have been around raising the kids until they um, got married. So in other words, the we stayed married for the kids' sake. Could have been. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, uh, alcohol seems to be, you know, a, a thing. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is in that deposition we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, their um charlie's father charles estimer gilson who yeah. was mentioned well when yeah. charlie gave a deposition he stated that he'd lived in natick all of his life except for a short period during the war when he was in cape cod right and that's just fascinating i'm just wondering what was he doing down in cape cod during the war shipbuilding something so what else do we need to cover on charlie gilson beale and his wife and their children um well, actually see. just him and his wife because we'll be doing the video on uh george their son who is our yeah. grandfather right so 
and um, we can we can pull it, the siblings in on that. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, um, well, now it, the, this is the interesting thing in our family tree. It forks, but it forks wildly because. <laughs> It does indeed. <laughs> Charlie's parents, which we'll get into uh, maybe two more videos down the road, caused this thing to uh, corkscrew all over the place. Oh, Lord. Have this is probably the best place to end this, and then we'll um, continue on with uh, Delia. Well, well, well it just let's make a point here. Yeah. Because we are talking about Charles... Gilson Beal. Yes. His father was Charles Estimer Gilson. Yes. So by all rights, yeah. we should be Gilsons, yes. not Beals. Yes. Um, I understand that. So well you understand that. I understand that. But the folks who are who are watching this, you know, just had a revelation. We're not Beals. We're Gilsons. Well, we are Beals because you know, his mama is a Beal. Bloodline, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we're actually Gilsons, and I've had the good fortune of being in contact with Gilson cousins. Yeah, and actually, I just got a, an email from Sean the other day, and um, you know, it's a uh, it's been quite a revelation for uh, Sean's family and for our family as to <laughs> the the who, what, where, when, why, and how, and oh my God! Okay, so, yeah, we'll be get, we'll be getting into that. Yeah, in yeah. The, I don't know if it's going to be the following video because we have to redo the video mm -hmm. on our grandparents, Helen and George Beale. Uh, but anyways, so we'll end it here. Okay. Sure. And we'll pick it up uh, next video, hopefully within a couple of days. It takes me a while to edit and, and post them. Well, I'm not going anywhere, so. Okay. <laughs> that, that's that I know of. That's yeah, good that to I know. know of.